the financial side of it, our players, the average career, at least the last time um, we did an analysis is 4.7 years, mm. right? Um, our players, um, I don't want them to be guys that make a lot of money. I want them to be guys that have a lot of money, mm. that are not rich, but wealthy, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that can further perpetuate generational wealth. Yes. Welcome back to League Biz. I'm your host, Dennis Botang. And look, this is where we talk about the business of basketball and the culture that surrounds it. Today, we have some amazing guests, that being Krista Chen and also Dex. Um, Krista, you're with the PA. Um, you've been there for a while. Uh, so there's a lot that we can learn from you today. Uh, Dex, you're at Mitchell and Ness. Right. So a lot of stories to be told. Sure. Um, I want to ask you a question, Chris. Uh, what inspired you to be involved in the game of basketball? So I'm on my 31st season mm -hmm. um, for starters. And I think, you know, like many people, you go to school and you think that you're going to do something different. And what I found, I majored in international relations. I was a case manager coming out of school. Um, that was cool, but I was young and thought I was fly. Right, so I had to make some more money. That wasn't working. Yeah. And then I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. So I, I did the whole law firm circuit for a while. Um, but I was bored, right? Yeah. And I wanted to do something that I enjoyed. And sports is what I love. I love basketball. I love football. Mm -hmm. So at that time, 31 years ago, it was not really popular to have women working in sports, especially in managerial positions. But um, but that was my inspiration. I just wanted to do something that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. I come from a family where you put 100% in, at least, to everything. And I couldn't do it in anything else. So mm -hmm. I said, let me give sports a try yeah. and see if I can pave the path. And it, it looks like it's been good to you. Yeah, be bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Dex, Mitchell and Ness, how did that happen for you? Uh, man, my, my journey has been a little unconventional, to say the least. Uh, I was hired seasonally as a sales associate at our Philadelphia flagship store uh, around Black Friday of 2011. Um, I guess they liked me so much, they decided to keep me. Mm -hmm. And eventually before I moved to corporate 2017, I, I worked my way into like assistant store manager. And uh, I took a job in customer service at Mitchell and Ness mm -hmm. when we fell under new ownership. And when I met our current CEO, he saw something in me. He said, hey, I want you to be in marketing. and some time has gone by and I moved to California and yes. Yeah, T tell us about that moment when the CEO saw something in you. How did it feel? You know, it was it was really cool and even it ties back to basketball. You know, everything in Michelin is pretty much sports related, but mm -hmm. our current CEO, his name is Kevin Wolf and he was an executive at Nike mm -hmm. and our office was moving and transition so I was sharing an office with the CEO but I was just a customer service guy you know pressing buttons mm -hmm. but Michael Jordan came up somehow yeah. and he was the guy who presented like all-star MVP trophy to Michael Jordan in the 80s so my mind is blown I'm like yo you know Michael Jordan <laughs> and yeah. really he and I have really hit it off from there and you know I just ideas I had for the company as far as social media and my vision for what Mitchell and Ness is and where it should be heading kind of connected us. Yeah, that's good. Krista, was there someone along your, uh, along your journey that saw something in you and maybe had you under their wing or just gave you information or maybe a blueprint to follow to um, exist in a business of sports? I don't know. That's an interesting question. I think for me, it's twofold, right? Because I think mm -hmm. it's about where you come from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my grandparents and you know, and my parents kind of instilled in me, like you can you can do what you want, right? Yeah. You just have to go for it. Um, so I had that, yeah. And that there was nothing that I couldn't attain, even back then, right? Mm -hmm. That many years ago, and even as a woman. Um, but then I, um, when I first wanted to transition out of the whole law firm world, mm -hmm. um, there was a gentleman, Charlie Grantham, who was the executive director of the Players Association at that time. 
And he just was like a visionary. He and Isaiah Thomas, mm -hmm. you know, I always joke. They're like, they were my first bosses in, in sports. And when I came in, they empowered me immediately. Um, you know, people as they do would try to circumvent me. Mm -hmm. And they would say, did you talk to Krista? And that's when it, you know, it wasn't popular to empower women, right? Mm. It wasn't, that wasn't what was happening. But they saw it and even though you know, I was bringing transferable skills. I wasn't a sports mm -hmm. expert at all, but they they saw that and said, I think you can take us to the next level. Mm -hmm. So here we are. There I was. Yeah, now that's good. Uh, I want to ask a little bit more about your background. Obviously, you mentioned your parents. Uh, what about the game of basketball, though? Like, did you play basketball? Were you? Have you seen me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't play. I mean, other than and I was a gymnast, but other yeah. than in, in, in school, I didn't play. Mm -hmm. I was not a good basketball player in college. I worked in the in the sports department for a little while, like as a basketball usher yeah. on game night. But no, I didn't play. I loved the game. And I always say, you know, there was one summer uh, in New York City, I took a, a summer class in criminology mm -hmm. and they had, City College had the pro-am. Mm -hmm. I was in the 80s, y'all. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, Mo Lucas was mm -hmm. on the team playing. And I would, you know, I didn't know much about Pro-Am at that time. But I was going because it was like basketball players right. playing. And it was so competitive and so gritty. And I, I would watch. And he was became my, my, my favorite player, of course, because he had like this, you know, this, this grit. And I said... At that point, I think it planted the seed for me too. It's like, I don't know what there is to do in this sport, but I could I could work in this. There's gotta be there's gotta be something. Yeah, there's gotta be something. Yeah, there's right? gotta be something. But I didn't play. Yeah. You know? I I, I didn't grow up a, a Knicks fan. I grew up a player fan. Mm -hmm. Um, but wasn't really necessarily a Knicks fan. Yeah. Unlike the other teams in New York. Like I'm a yeah. Giants fan and a Mets fan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, her mentioning teams and fans, obviously Mitchell and Ness uh, specializes and they're expert in that in that arena. Uh, I want to ask you about just uh, your love for the game and being in the midst of all that. Is it like a kid in the candy store? Oh my goodness, man, you have no idea. So uh, I'm from Philly, if yeah. I didn't tell you guys already. Mm -hmm. And um, I was born in 1899. <laughs> 1899, 1989, sorry. <laughs> 1989, and yeah. you know, uh, Allen Iverson was drafted in 1996. Yeah. So I remember being in either first or second grade, and my brother bought me a pair of questions. Mm -hmm. Up until that point, I never paid any attention to any type of shoes, but, and I don't remember him giving me any type of lecture, like, don't mess these up or anything like that, but they were so special to me because Allen Iverson wore them, and just around that time everything that i was consuming you know whether music videos or watching the sixers play it just it all tied together fashion sports music culture and i loved it and then when the throwback thing happened early 2000s i remember i'll never be able to afford this stuff so really yes yeah, it's, it's a dream come true for yeah. me to be a mitchell and Ness. it's the stuff that i always desired you know, from a young kid to a teenager. And I still like it now, fortunately. Yeah, there's so much history within that. Like when you mention AI, the, the shoes, the throwbacks, I wanted to talk about that a bit because I lived through that moment too. I was born in 1989 as mm -hmm. well. Being in high school uh, or watching music videos, everybody's yeah. rocking throwback jerseys, even some of the players sitting court side rocking that. Man, how did it feel to be able to just watch that and then become part of that culture? Incredible. I, I, I was talking to some people earlier. They were asking me about my Mitchell and Ness journey. And uh, a week before I got hired, I was in Center City walking around with my best friend. We were working like a construction job, dead end, just, just really something to do. 21, 22 years old. We went in Mitchell and Ness. And same thing I thought when I was younger, we'll never afford any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I met at the time the store manager and he told me to apply and really I've been working there ever since. Wow. Yeah. It like a dream come true for real. Seriously, seriously. Yeah. It, not what I was expecting that day, 
really a uh, center city Philly where our flagship store is. If you don't have any business down there, you don't go there. You know, you said that your family is from like the same place my family, Mount Airy, Germantown, that area. Uh, you have to take public transportation down there. And especially if you're a kid with no money, you don't have any business down there. So I, it, it had to be fate yeah. because we definitely had, didn't have money in our pockets, but we were there and I met the right people and made the right connections. Yeah. That's good. Uh, hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Dennis Botang, host of League Biz. And today I'm here in partnership with DraftKings. So shout out to DraftKings. Check this out. Super Bowl 58 is right around the corner. And I teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NFL, who is gearing up for the big game with a huge offer. Right now, all new customers will get $200 in bonus bets instantly when they place their first $5 wager on anything. Okay, get in on the action by downloading the DraftKings app. And don't forget to use my promo code, which is promo code biz, B-I-Z. So new customers who just bet $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Are you wondering what you can use your $200 in bonus bets on? You can combine multiple bets together from the same game for a shot at an even bigger payout. If sports betting is not yet available in your state don't worry you can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. New customers use my promo code biz and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code biz only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Peace. Carissa, uh, as I mentioned, players sitting courtside, wearing jerseys and everything, the culture of the NBA. Uh, what are some of the things that you've seen that are different now or how the, even the mentality of players has switched? Hmm. Well, there's been an evolution, right? So mm -hmm. for me, my career started at the PA. Mm -hmm. Then I went, I was consulting for Nike, so I had a different lens. I'm bringing that up because I had a different lens. Yes. Then I was at the NBA for 17 and a half years when the dress code and all of that mm -hmm. started. Now I'm back at the PA. So the lens from which I viewed the evolution of the players, I think, you know, changes based on yeah. on where you are. But yeah. um, I mean, there, there's a lot, a lot that has changed, I think, due to social media, I think, due to just everything players have become so much more savvy and exposed earlier. Um, I think as a society we've evolved and I think sports is a microcosm of society. So just mm -hmm. as you see things change there, um, you know, this thing, these horrible stats that were out there about 60% of players, you know, being broke. That was, first of all, that number was never correct for the record. Wow. Um, but players have just become more involved and educated about the business and their place in the business um, and how to best engage in the business for life after basketball. So I think that's a, a big thing. I think um, understanding their value as an asset because without players, there is no game, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think you see more and more of that now. Like guys know that, they understand that, uh, they know their value on and off the court. Um, so I think those are the things that you see evolve over time. But again, I compare it to society and it's the same thing that you see with similar age demographic mm -hmm. for them. Do you think, um, I mean, I guess not do you think, but how do you feel about your position? Is it more about empowering or informing uh, players? It's both. So in my role as chief player engagement officer, I have all of the player facing departments report to me. So that's mental health and wellness, that's player health, career development, player programs, player matters, and off the court, right? All things that deal with players and transition, their issues, uh, crisis management, our drug policy, all of that. Um, so a lot of my job is focused upon how we educate our players. Mm -hmm. um, and then how we empower them with that information. Mm -hmm. Like you have the information, how are you gonna use it? Mm -hmm. We have this, you know, bring your, build your own experience program by example. 
So what is it that you want to do and who can we put you in front of to empower you where you are now so that you can succeed when you hang your sneakers up, whatever that is, Yeah. right? Um, if we're talking about the anti-drug policy, which I'm passionate about, um, I want to make sure that you have this information about steroids and performance enhancing drugs, not because this is what you do, but because you're working out with people, people want you to be stronger, faster, recover more quickly, but we have rules, mm -hmm. right? So you've got to know, you can't just order this product off of Amazon or give, take this or that thing. Like you have to know because there's, there are consequences that come with that in this professional realm in mm -hmm. which you live. Uh, that's good. And even with the, you saying that you're passionate about that, you know, sometimes do you ever see the tweets like um, when a player just has a crazy game and then people are like, oh, he's going to get drug tested oh, on Monday. Look, <laughs> they have posted my phone number <laughs> oh on Instagram. Gosh, what? It has been, yeah, everything. It's like, oh, somebody better call Chris Chin because the, the testers are here, you know. Oh, my so, gosh. So it's, uh, yeah, you know, we, we see that. I mean, the way... This show is not about the policy. We can do that no, another no, day, no, but for sure. but the um, but you know it's a random test. Yeah, yeah. And it just sometimes it just you know it's the hap it happens. But the other side of it, when I flip the coin, I always say, look, I got a lot of good talented players, yeah, right? Yeah. And you'd be hot any night. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so that's kind of what I what I credit to. But but I get a lot I get a lot of <laughs> flack about yeah, that. Nah, nah, I'm I, the testers are here now, <laughs> just because I scored seventy. You know, I'm like, yeah, oh. yeah. I guess that's part of the business too. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And all in fun too. Mm -hmm. by the no, way. no, for sure. And that's why I have to ask because I see them and I, I just start laughing. So I have to ask since you're here. Well, yeah. now now it's like a badge of honor. You know, a guy's go score 50, 70, and they're like, "Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, all me." So no, that's facts. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Dex, uh, with with uh, everything that's going on with with Mitchell and Ness's household name, uh, I grew up with it being around. Even Chris is was saying like great product you know like we were talking Thank about you. that um i feel like a lot of people got their starts with with mitchell ness too i mean i remember seeing guys selling the mitchell ness jerseys out of their trunk uh right and also expanding the game of basketball what is it that you guys are, are doing for those guys who are big fans of mitchell ness how are you guys impacting them or the stories that they want to tell Ooh, that's a really good question. Uh, so one of my main focuses now moving forward is going to be storytelling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the same affinity that I have for the brand, we definitely want to reach out to early advocates as well as new fans and kind of figure out what it is that brings them so much joy from Mitchell and Ness. Uh, it's funny, for All-Star Weekend, we have a pop-up shop in to be transparent, we're a little short staffed, so I had to work the POS. And it's been it's been some years since I've dealt with customers, but it still is amazing to see what our product, how it makes people feel. You know, whether it's a t-shirt, a jersey, a short, a hat, a logo, just something that brings you back to, you know, a better day or mm -hmm. a fine memory that you have. So we're gonna start honing in a lot more, hopefully with players, because we know that those guys grew up and even if they're not familiar with the brand, you know, maybe your favorite player or your dad or somebody, mm -hmm. just just to make that connection to the, the past is just so important. I think that uh, everything moves so quickly now. We're focused on the new mm -hmm. more often than not. But one of my favorite things about our brand is that we continually celebrate yeah. our heroes from the past. Which is essentially building that community um, as well, right? So bringing the community together. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 funny. We have the same type of fandom that a Nike would. Maybe not to the same extent, but I know people who have twenty eight hundred Mitchell and Ness jerseys. You wow. know, you spend your life savings on jerseys, and people who have our logo tattooed. Wow. So it's a cultural phenomenon, you know, especially for people our age that. If you watch a music video, you might not have known that it was Mitchell and Ness, but I'll I'll tell you that yeah. this was ours. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing, um, Krista. Uh, you've been in this position for 31 years, working with players, seeing the game change. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, you would like to see going forward? Uh, I think 
I'd like to see for our players. I think I'd like to see people see them outside of just playing basketball, mm -hmm. right? Because our, our players are multidimensional. Mm -hmm. They are sons, fathers, husbands, businessmen, um, incredibly brilliant. And they're experts at their craft. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to see them respected as such. Um, and I'd like to see them have more equity mm -hmm. in the game, yeah. you know, on and off the floor. Yeah. Right. So I think, you know, we throw this word partnership around a lot. Um, but I think, you know, how you think about a partner and treat a partner is is very telling. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when we talk about the financial side of it, our players, the average career, at least the last time um, we did an analysis is 4.7 years. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, our players, um, I don't want them to be guys that make a lot of money. I want them to be guys that have a lot of money, mm -hmm. that are not rich, but wealthy, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and and that can further perpetuate generational wealth. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. To change their communities, their societies, um, and most importantly, their families. Yeah. And that's, that's, I mean, that's the reason why even this platform exists, is informing people because we, exactly what you're saying. I think a lot of people misunderstand. Like the business of basketball isn't just about, hey, I'm hanging out, I'm working with this team, like look at me. It's actually really about building something, sustaining mm -hmm. it, right? Um, which is something that you said earlier too, educating the players. Yep. Um, how do we continue to also educate the people outside of the game that want to be part of this though? So I think it's a, a couple of things. I always tell kids, um, your jobs in sport are few and far between, mm -hmm. right? But the minute that you know you have an interest, you've got to volunteer, you've got to do internships, you've got to try to be in places where you can network. Um, if it means that you've got to, you know, you work a summer job and you save the money to come to summer league just to meet people, then you do that. I think, you know, what I tell a lot of high school, jun I mean, college juniors and seniors, is you might not get that job at the league or a team, but apply at the sponsors. Go to American Express um, because they sponsor the league. Yeah. Don't look at just basketball because you love it. Look across all. Mm -hmm. Build transferable skills mm -hmm. um, so that you can then sell yourself. When I came into sport, I didn't. I didn't have a sports marketing or management degree, mm -hmm. but I was able to sell my transferable skills as a case manager for the city of New York, mm -hmm. and then someone who did the law firm circuit as a paralegal and a case manager. Mm -hmm. So I could take those skills and say, no, I don't. I didn't work in sport before, but I've done A, B, C, and D, and here's how it relates. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing I think young people have to be aware of, and I, I feel like a, a, a old fogey when I say it, you know, and my grandfather used to say, it's them videos they watch, it's the videos. <laughs> you know, you gotta watch what you post. You have to watch how you project professionally, yeah. even as a young person. Mm -hmm. Because I know when I'm interviewing, no matter what it's for, I'm looking at your social media. If your mm -hmm. social media is crazy, and you, yeah. you know, out swinging from the chandelier, I'm like, uh, I'm not interested, Yeah. right? Because yeah. I, I just, I, I don't want that around yeah. me. Mm -hmm. um, I often tell people when they come to work for me, this is a business. Yes. If you need friends and friendships and dating people, mm -hmm. then you need to go, it's not, it's not for you, yeah. right? Yeah. Come to work, come to work dressed as a professional, mm -hmm. right? And that's guys, that, that's guys and, and, and women. Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter who it is. Show up ready and be professional. Look like who you want to be. If mm -hmm. it's me, then do that. If it's whoever it is, but you have to show up and show that you're ready. Okay. Because we have so much talent to choose from. Yeah. Um, so I say all of that. I say you build your transferable skills. I say you volunteer, you get in where you can, you ask people for introductions. I take a lot, and I swear I don't have time, <laughs> but I, I take a lot of 15 minute coffees or can I meet you over Zoom? Or I try to make myself as available yeah. as I can because 
when I was coming through, A, it was 9,000 years ago, but there was no one for me to meet with and talk with, really, about it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I want to try to be that because no matter what you do, what's your baker, candlestick maker, you got to mentor other mm -hmm. people and lend that to other people because yeah. it could be your kid. My son is in the business now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He works for the Westchester Knicks. He's a video coordinator, player development coach. He didn't come in like with a silver spoon. Mm -hmm. He worked summer league for seven years. Wow. He did the Nike camps. Mm -hmm. He gave up his vacations, you know, wow. all the grit and grind. Did the, the work that people didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. But like now where he is today, he's doing basketball without borders and he's, you know, doing all this stuff and he's right where he wants to be. And I said to him, I can get you the interview because I can do that. I can ask for that. Mm -hmm. But you got to get the job and That's keep right. it. Yeah. And just because I'm your mom, you know, you're not flying. You're not flying high, brother. You got to yeah. do it. And he kills it. You know, so I say that to all young people. How proud is your son making? Oh, my gosh. I look, you don't <laughs> even want to know, right? I can talk about my son all day. <laughs> Joel Garcia, I love him to death. I yeah. mean, he makes me really proud because everywhere I go, People say, oh, I saw your son, or your son is killing it. I have coaches come up to me. You know, people talk about his work ethic, and I'm proud because he has my work ethic, yeah. right? He works hard. Um, does he love every second of everything? No, but the good thing is we can talk it out, and I can teach him how to solve for X when things aren't going well. Mm -hmm. So, no, I'm extremely proud of him. You know, when they win a game, I'm like, we won! <laughs> you know, or, yeah. or he'll tell me he had a scout and he gets excited about that. And so um, I think like all parents, you know, I could, you can talk about your kids forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I am very, very proud of him. And I, you know, I have friends who have kids in the business. We are all proud of our children because they didn't try to ride on our backs. We got the interviews for them, but they got in and put the work in. Yeah. The you got to put the part. work in. Yeah. And I think that's the only other thing I would say to young people is like, sports is glamorous, they think, but it's a job, it's, it's work. Yeah. People say, I wanna do what you're doing, being crisis management. I'm like, do you really? <laughs> when your phone is ringing at three and four, and you gotta really solve some real life yeah. issues at that time. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just all walking across the court with your credential and being at events. It's like, this is real work mm -hmm. for this multi-billion dollar business. Oh, that's right, that's you know? right. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Dennis Botang from League Biz, and I'm here in partnership with DraftKings to talk to you guys about my picks, okay? As you know, basketball season has been very exciting, and we're getting closer and closer to, uh, you know, a time of the season where things get really spicy. When teams make it to the playoffs, when teams make it to the semifinals, and then the finals. So today I'm gonna to talk about my picks when it comes to these games. So February 3rd, okay? So we got Brooklyn versus Philly, Golden State versus Atlanta, Sac Town versus Chicago, LA versus New York, Cleveland versus San Antonio, and Milwaukee versus Dallas. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Brooklyn and Philly. Have you guys seen how Embiid's been balling? I mean, he's averaging, what, like 30-something points a game? You got a young guy like Maxi beside him. I, I like their team. I mean, outside of injuries, I think Philly is a good team. I mean, like I said, MB's always balling. And then when you look at um, Brooklyn, they also have a great team too. Those guys know how to ball. When we look at where they are right now, I'm going to just keep it real. Picking Philly uh, to, to pull that win, they might just, it, it, it's not going to be easy, but I, I say they, they they pull it off, you know what I'm saying? Let's talk about Golden State and Atlanta. If you've been paying attention, um, a lot of people are talking about somewhat of a death to a dynasty um, and that Golden State is pretty much uh, headed downhill. I think I mentioned this before as well and then i've had conversations with other people and um you know 
certain things don't last forever um but are they like sore losers out here are they about to be like have you know are they had are they gonna be having like a super like terrible uh record no I, I don't think so i mean those guys can still ball so when they play atlanta i i'm picking golden state to uh get the dub there let's talk about sack town in chicago all right so there's trouble in chicago you know what i'm saying i think they're trying to figure it out you know you got some people who are ballers that don't want to be there so i don't think they really care too much i i just have to say um on that note though um great coaching uh, up in sack town uh you got great young players who are who want to win the culture's changed you know, you got Fox out there. You got Sabonis. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm giving it to Sacktown. I think that they uh, they got, you know, uh, good chemistry. Um, they move the ball well. They're pretty quick. Um, you know, they're playing pretty good. So I'm, 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 I'm going to give it to, I'm going to give it to Sacktown. Now let's talk about Los Angeles and New York. So when we talk about Los Angeles and New York, um, it's, it's, it's a dope, it's gonna be an amazing game. Uh, a lot of energy, a lot, a lot of energy, um, especially from New York. I mean, you see what's going on, man. Uh, they they make some uh, really dope moves. Um, those guys are a polarizing team. Uh, they can get the job done, man. I like what I've been seeing from the uh, from from New York. I like what I've been seeing. Um, it looks promising, in my opinion. I remember somebody saying that they couldn't win um, with, uh, with the little guy, but um, Bronson is a baller. Okay. Um, you know, you got in a no beater. Um, come on, man. It's what, what are we talking about? Um, when we talk about LA, it's like ups and downs uh, for, for, for LA. Um, and uh, look, I, I, I love the legend that they have there. I love um, the history and the experience that come with LA. Um, but I don't, I don't think they're going to win that game. I think New York is going to win that game. Let's talk about Cleveland and San Antonio. It's tough because, okay, I'll put it like this. About San Antonio, their season's been very sucky, okay? Um, I think they're trying to build around Wimby. Um, and it's one of those things where they have an amazing coach, legendary coach. I, I can never say anything bad about him. Um, but I don't think this is their season i mean you can go look at the, the record you can uh, yeah like i mean all they've been doing is just taking outs uh you know but when it comes to uh cleveland i mean they got hard working folks there you know what i'm saying they do have um they they have they have ballers there they're gonna win it you know what i'm saying i think they're they're gonna win it um i i'm, I'm going with cleveland i'm going with cleveland on this one Last but not least, we have Milwaukee versus Dallas. This is going to be an exciting game, in my opinion. Um, I hope everyone's healthy for this game because uh, I want to see these guys go at it. You know what I mean? You have magicians that play for Dallas um, when it comes to handling the ball, when it comes to scoring, when it comes to dribbling, when it comes to making the right calls. In Milwaukee, you have someone who's just so powerful going through the paint. You just can't stop him. You know what I'm saying? Someone right next to him who's so clutch. You know what I'm saying? Right on time. I'm going to say Milwaukee is going to pull this off. Uh, it even hurts a little bit to say that because I do really believe that Dallas has a, something amazing going on. But um, yeah, I'm pulling for Milwaukee on this. So I think Milwaukee is going to get the W. So guys, um, I'm not going to hold you. 
you know, you guys got to make sure you you watch the games, you tap in. If you disagree, I hope you make your picks as well, too. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to DraftKings for this opportunity. Um, so with that being said, make sure you guys go and make your picks and let's see uh, where you end up. And I'm your guy, Dennis Botang, and thank you. Peace. Dex, when she mentions work ethic, I also think about you. You stayed with Mitchell and Ness for so long, right. worked your way up, I mean, from sales and all of that. To what Carissa was saying, what are some of the experiences that you thought about? Sure, man, I've done it all. You know, I, I come from a retail environment, so, you know, when everybody else gets to relax or go shopping on Black Friday, I was I was there putting the time in, you know, um, restricted not having much money but even besides that restricted to when you can go on vacation blackout times you know long days long nights uh having to manage people who you know how retail can be some people are just breezing through so you can't even really expect them to take it that seriously but i have a vision for my future so i need you to yeah. you know follow my lead and Sometimes it's been tough. Some people would push back and yeah. Yeah. Well, what are, uh, what are some of the challenges that you can, is there an example of something that you experienced? Like, I don't know when you was in sales that. Oh man. Um, okay. Perfect example. Uh, when I first moved from retail to corporate, I, there was a job opening in customer service. So customer service for us is not what you would think like, um, somebody for the website if you're you get the wrong order i was customer service for our retail accounts so during this time we were switching from being owned by adidas sld to private equity so for whatever reason our um our ordering systems weren't communicating mm -hmm. so i had to sit and key in orders so Jeez. you know if if you're one of our accounts and you bought a thousand hats i'm sitting there boom 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 every Jeez. every single line and i had other people in customer service with me and there were some people i remember one guy specifically couldn't keep up i would do maybe a hundred orders in a couple hours and he would be on like his fifth oh my so gosh just you know so, some things uh i just wanted to get my foot in the door i didn't care what it was i, I, I was already doing whatever it took just to get the look from the people in the office so just uh, always being available, no matter what it was, whether it was something that pertained to my job at the store level, or if you know, you're know you an executive and you need me to take care of something, I was always there, I'm still in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris, were there any challenges that you can share with us that you faced on your way up that you just, you learned a lot from and overcame? You know, the gender challenge early on was a big deal. Um, you know, I, it was a, a trip I was going to take and I was, they sort of had to switch it at the last moment because I was going into a country where as a woman in sport, I might not have been as respected, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like a, you bust your butt and you're like, you yeah. know, that's kind of painful. Um, but I think, you know, the, the challenge a lot of times I think is making people understand that you belong, respect mm -hmm. that you belong mm -hmm. um, is, a, is a huge deal. You know, I always say I'm a footer, but I'm a five footer, right? <laughs> and I always worked around really big people. And I remember um, working in a department and it had been, they'd never had a woman in a managerial role and that group was all men and they didn't really want me in the group, right? They made it clear, yeah. they, they made it clear. Um, but the minute you tell me I can't is when I'm like, oh, uh-uh, mm -hmm. not the wrong one. Yeah. So mm -hmm. one day I remember coming to my office and I noticed that like my department was like empty. Mm. I said, where could they all be? And um, they were all huddled in an office with the door closed. And so I said, okay, I have just about had it. Yeah. So I took the heel of my shoe off and I banged on the door and 
person whose office it was came to the door and he said, what's going on? I said, I'm sorry, is there a meeting mm -hmm. going on in here? They said, yes, it is. I said, is it about department business? They said, yes, it is. And I said, okay, we'll move over and pull up a chair because I'm sitting down. There we go. Um, and I didn't have any problems after that um, with them, but there was always like sort of this, this thing and I had to insert myself. And, and it's just kind of funny because sometimes people think, well, Somebody told me not that long ago I was confrontational. I said, no, I'm not confrontational, I'm assertive, mm. right? And if I was a man, I would be assertive. Yeah. Because I'm a woman, I'm confrontational. Mm -hmm. I just stand my ground. Mm -hmm. I can articulate my points, I can defend what I have to say. Um, and I'm a woman of few words, believe it or not, mm. right? So if I say something, I'm saying what I mean. Yeah. And I mean what I say. And I try not to make an error, but if I do, I apologize, right? I don't have my ego is not that. So I say all that to say, like, you just have to, you know, in this business, man or woman, people are always jockeying for position. And you got to kind of get in, hold your place, and stand there because people will try to push you out the way. Yeah. And you got to yeah. just kind of be aware of it. Mm -hmm. So I learned those lessons. I taught my son those lessons. Um, but people know, like, I'm a... I'm an advocate for my clients, no matter who signs the check. I want to say what I have to say. And I want to, it's never personal. Yeah. You know, I always say it's never personal. We can fight about this, and we're still good about all of that, right? right? But we're going to disagree on this issue, and it's okay for us to disagree on this issue. Yeah. Uh, regarding to women in sports, um, does it make you happy to be able to see this change or do you see any change from where you're sitting? Or, you know, what else, do, what can we do to support and <coughs> and give women, um, you know, the help amplify the voice? We're doing a lot. I mean, I think we've made a lot of movement, but in my opinion, not enough, mm -hmm. you know? I think, you know, when I interview for any role, I look at my applicants, right? And when people say, no matter what it is, I couldn't find, I'm like, well, where'd you look? Yeah. You know, where were you looking? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have a problem asking that question. So I think that, that we have to be very conscious that we're considering the broad, the broadest pool that we can. And we have to make sure that we're bringing in you know, it's not about giving somebody a chance because they're a woman or a chance because they're a man or a chance because they're a person of, color, person of color. It's about giving people chances because they are qualified to do the work yeah. and not acting like you can't see them, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I think, you know, we just have to remain conscious about it yeah. and put people in, our, in, in positions where we can empower them to see. We have a lot of young talent coming up, but if people don't get chances to do anything, they can't grow, Yeah. right? They can't get better. Or if they're afraid because they think they're gonna lose their job. You know, I tell my people all the time, you made a mistake, we'll live. Am yeah. I gonna die? Mm -hmm. When I saw them for world peace, the basketball, like, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's a billion, a multi-billion dollar business, but yeah. you know, but like we're gonna survive. And I think we have to allow for that and be conscious about that. Yeah. Turning those L's into lessons. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dex. Um, how are we empowering or exp uh, exposing these opportunities like yourself to the younger generation, you know, the kids that come from your environment? Because we know most of these kids, they're on Instagram or they're playing 2K mm -hmm. and they just see the player. Mm -hmm. um, they don't mm -hmm. see a guy like yourself that's working at Mitchell and Ness mm -hmm. who gets to wear fly stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, get fresh for, for you know, every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you know, you. Um, like how, how are we uh, speaking to those uh, people, like those young men and women? Uh, I think the most important thing is um, you have to see it to believe it. You know, um, I didn't have that luxury. You know, uh, my mom was a teacher. My dad was a police officer. I didn't even know that work like this. Of course, I knew it existed, but I didn't know anybody that was doing this kind of stuff. So I think um, 
man's expose yourself what I would tell a kid who wants to be in the position that I'm in is to go back and do the knowledge. I learned about people that were with Mitchell and Ness from, you know, the time where it really popped off the early 2000s. I, what their name was, what they do, whatever stories I could find about them, whether it's, you know, YouTube is a great resource, but I was looking in double XL magazines, mm -hmm. um, shows on HBO that don't even come on anymore and finding out like, what did this guy do? to help this company mm -hmm. and bring the energy to it that he did. And uh, I think that you should research whatever it is that you want to be, find out who those people are and emulate them, and, you know, stay authentic to yourself, but yeah. find out what those qualities are as much as you can. You might not be able to speak to this person directly, but you know, you can find out yeah, yeah, yeah. How they went about it. Do you, do you think that, um, uh, I mean, as we speak to technology and everything, do you, how do you feel about someone coming to your Instagram account or something like that, finding you, mm -hmm. seeing your highlights, and they're like, yo, I want to do what you do. What do you think about that approach? For them to reach out to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it's great. For yeah. for me, I mean, I'm, I'm open. I'll, I'll talk to anybody. I definitely love to inspire people. Yeah. So if a kid sees me and wants to ask me anything, I'll tell them exactly how I got here. Yeah. I was open, I was genuine with everyone. I treated everyone with respect. Yeah. I worked with celebrities, basketball players. I also worked with regular people. Yeah. I also had a homeless problem outside of my store, but mm. everyone got the same treatment. And I feel like that's why people respect me because I don't, I don't have a different face yeah. whenever stuff is happening. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty authentic. Definitely, man. I, I can't. Uh, I don't go in that office and change my voice. And you know, yeah, there yeah. there are things that some of us feel like we may have to do. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, I don't feel that pressure. Yeah, I I, I feel like um, I'm talented enough, smart enough to not have to compromise who I am. And I also feel like if I were to do that, you may not get the best version of me, the best work out of me. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit more to that? Because that is a real thing. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That, that we see some of our friends or people, you know, really do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it, it comes down to um, being comfortable with who, who you are uh, and letting people know that, you know, we may not look the same, come from the same background, but I, I am intelligent. I am valuable. I'm personable, uh, just all all the qualities that you would want in somebody who's doing marketing. You would want somebody with good ideas, somebody who cool or whatever you want to say. Yeah. 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 But I, I think it's really important to be yourself because people see through it. People yeah. see through it. We all have met people and you can tell when they're not being themselves. And when I see it, I, I just can't figure out why, why, why would you do that to yourself? Yeah. Yeah. It depends on the extreme you go to, though, right? Because mm -hmm. I think we call it code switching. Yep. Yes, like, that's right? the word. I couldn't think of it. Switching. So I know, like, sometimes I think about the dress code is a good example. Mm -hmm. right? I used to tell the guys, like, okay, you don't like the dress code, but you, but this is the rule, mm -hmm. right? And you like the check. Mm -hmm. So you got a choice. You got to play by the rules. Right? So you got you to gotta do this for this four hours. Mm -hmm. doesn't change who you are inside. Mm -hmm. You're just being asked to do this. And they always joke with me because they always say, you know, from the streets to the boardroom mm -hmm. or back, right? So it depends. Mm -hmm. I could have whatever conversation I'm having with them about life stuff. Mm -hmm. But if I have to go into their GM's office or talk to their agent, you get a little bit of a different version. I'm not less me, mm -hmm. sure. but I also have to make sure that I'm advocating and representing them in a way that's going to resonate so I can get the job done, Yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm not being fake or phony or fraud, exactly um, but sometimes you have to, you have to, you have to change it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's like somebody saw me in my neighborhood and I had on Tim's in a sweatsuit and they, it was somebody from work, right? At the yeah. NBA and they called, like they called everybody they knew and said, oh my gosh, we just lost each end. Cause this is this, you know, on Tim's in a sweatsuit. Cause they had never 
wow. seen that before, wow. right? Yeah. But it's because I couldn't wear it to work, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. at, at that time, well, I probably can't do it now either. But I, um, <laughs> you couldn't, you know, I couldn't go to work dress like that. So, you know, people see you in your work environment and they have a, a perception. I'm like, I have more sneakers than most. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even well, as an old person, but- You might have to pull up to the, and see your closet. Might have to come to the house. Yeah. But but I'm just like, you, you, you have to do that because the environment calls for that, but it does not make you, now some people take it to the extreme. Yeah, you know, that's what right? I was talking and about. And I think that's what you were referencing. <laughs> right. But I think, you know, when I talk to young people, I say the same thing. It's like, the clothes that you wore to the club, that's not what you wear to the office. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you invest in your office clothes because that's where you make your money. Mm. Right? The club stuff, don't invest in that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you have to present and project because you're trying to build, especially if you work in an environment that has a code like that. Right. Like enough. if you're Mitchell Ness, it's cool because you can wear I'm wearing Mitchell Ness. What can somebody say? Yeah, yeah. what can they say? Yeah. Right? I'm dressed perfectly. Exactly. Yeah, for, exactly. you know what I mean? Not but, facts. But it depends upon where you are and you do have to have to adjust to the environment, mm -hmm. but it does not mean you can't be yourself. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, well, I want to thank y'all so much. And thank you. I nah, appreciate you. Thank nah, you. seriously. Thank you. And thank you. Likewise. Cause this, meeting you. This, this was uh, super uh, educational for me because you let me into your worlds, you let me into your office, you let me into your office, and also our viewers to understand what happens in your worlds and how they can uh, exist in the business of basketball whether it's at Mitchell Ness or at the PA. Um, so with that being said, Krista, Dex, thank y'all. You guys are so amazing. Thank you. And this has been Ligby's. Peace. 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 Peace.